Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, hitting you guys with a letter from a fan. You guys are sending in letters and I'm responding to them. Oh yeah. Ugh, there we go. Got a good stretch in there. And let's get a drink. <gasps> All right, James sends this one in. Hi, Anthony, my name is James. <laughs> I already said that, James. What the hell? And I'm from Massachusetts. I wanted to ask you this question. Are you ever worried about your musical taste changing that in 10 or 15 years, Death Grips or Kendrick Lamar just won't sound as good? It has happened to me before. I remember only four or five years ago, I loved bands like Imagine Dragons. Now I can't stand their work. Thank you so much for uh, doing these reviews, blah, 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 blah. blah. All right, James, thank you. Thank you for watching and thank you for sending in this letter. Am I worried that my musical taste will change at this point in my 30s? No. And not that I think that my music taste is never going to change from here. I'm actually kind of past the point where I'm afraid of that anymore. I mean, to get to the point where I am now, my music taste has changed again and again and again and again and again. I can recall times in the past, like when I was in my tween years and my teen years, uh, in my early college years, where I didn't really like punk music or I didn't really like electronic music or I didn't really get jazz or... I mean, when I first heard Death Grips, and I mean first heard, like the first couple of tracks I ever heard. When I first heard Death Grips, I thought they were dumb. <laughs> like, my taste has changed so many times in so many ways since I was a teenager, since I started this YouTube channel. And actually, for me, it's kind of exciting. You know, it's kind of exciting for your music taste to change. It's kind of exciting to like new things. It's kind of exciting to hear new things. It's kind of exciting to have your mind opened in ways that... Uh, you never thought of before. And changing doesn't necessarily always reflect itself in, hey, this is good now, and hey, this is bad now, so on and so forth. Sometimes your music taste changes in such a way where you go back to a Kendrick Lamar or a Death Grips 10, 15 years down the road, and it means something else to you, or it just sounds a different way. You still like it, but it kind of scratches a different itch, or it just takes on an entirely new meaning, or you just kind of see it through the lens of your appreciation of other things right now, you know? And there are lots of records that, like, I love. I listen to them, and I've been listening to them for years, and I've heard them again and again and again and again. But honestly, some of those albums I've listened to so much have kind of, like, played them to death, you know? Not to the point where I don't enjoy them when they're on, but kind of to the point where their novelty has sort of worn off a little bit. I know some people don't listen to music in, in the same way. Some people are happy to listen to the same things for the rest of their lives, and that's pretty much it. And that's entirely fine. You know, I think music and the art of music and the consumption of music lends itself to a variety of different consumption and listening styles and preferences. There's nothing exactly wrong with growing up on Led Zeppelin and Led Zeppelin is your favorite fucking band for the rest of your goddamn life and you die with uh, all of your Led Zeppelin records buried with you in your casket. Nothing entirely wrong with that. But honestly, I feel like if your music taste isn't changing at all, it's kind of because, or probably because, your perspective isn't changing. Maybe you're not really changing or growing as a person. Maybe you're not really exposing yourself to new ideas, new sounds, new experiences, new kinds of thoughts. And I feel like, personally, at least for me, that's kind of an, that's kind of an integral part of uh, you know my lifestyle. Um, just kind of uh, keeps things spicy and keeps things interesting. So... To sum it up, no, I'm not really uh, afraid of my taste changing. I, for one, welcome it, and I think you guys should too, honestly, because um, obviously uh, not all change is good. You know, there can be bad change. Uh, not, you know, I'm not saying that if you go from being a giant classical fan to becoming the 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 number one, um, I don't know, little pump stand that it's a. Uh, <laughs> necessarily a sign of growth or anything like that. But uh, change isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's not necessarily th something that you should be afraid of. And especially when it comes to change of musical taste, I mean, one certainly, I think, has at least a little bit of control, you know, over what it is you expose yourself to, what it is you spend the most time listening to, what it is you enjoy. Um, and, uh, you know, nothing wrong and no shame in something not being as fantastic or not meaning as much to you as it used to, because chances are, 
um, you're a different person than you used to be. And maybe that music, maybe that artist, maybe that album just kind of hit you at a particular time in your life where you needed it. And that's not, uh, that's not a bad thing. That's not something to write off. That's not, you know, something indicative of a lack of quality of the music or a deficiency in you as a listener. So welcome change. Change is fine. Change isn't necessarily a bad thing. Don't be afraid of it. I say embrace it. Change, change, change.